cognitive psychology asks the question, what is going on in the head of a human being? A cognitive psychologist, when talking about the mind, is not looking at behavior, but is trying to understand the concept of conscious thought. Where behavior is observable, the opposite can be said about the mind. Cognition is the act of knowing, and psychology is the study of all human activities related to knowledge. These activities include attention, creativity, memory, perception, problem solving, thinking, and the use of language. Cognitive psychologists can be viewed like people who want to know how a computer works. The human brain is a structured system for handling a vast amount of information and then interpreting that information. Transforming philosophy to psychology was a major milestone with the first psychology lab in 1879 at the University of Leipzig opened by Wilhelm Wundt, a German physiologist. This is generally considered the official start of psychology as a separate and distinct scientific discipline. Wundt perceived the subject as the study of human consciousness and sought to apply experimental methods to studying internal mental processes. Though unreliable and not seen as scientific, his use of introspection helped set the stage for future experimental methods. Once influence declined over the years, but his legacy in psychology was unquestionable. Different schools of thought began to emerge with structuralism, being the first with one of once students named Edward B. Tishner. Structuralists believed that human consciousness could be broken down into much smaller parts using a process known as introspection. Again, the problem of introspection was how the researcher would know the subject was being honest. Subject could often be coached in responses by the researcher, thus becoming unreliable and subjective. When Tishner died in 1927, structuralism gave rise to functionalists. The main functionalist was William James, with psychology flourishing in America during the mid to late 1800s. The focus of functionalism was on how behavior actually works to help people live in their environment, using methods such as direct observation. While both of these early schools of thought emphasized human consciousness, their conceptions of it were significantly different. In these times, structuralists were trying to examine the mental processes and the functionalists believed consciousness was more continuous and changing process. While functionalism is no longer a separate school of thought, it would go on to influence later psychologists and theories of human thought and behavior. Psychoanalysis was the next school of thought. Whereas early psychologists stressed conscious human experience, Sigmund Freud's theory of personality altered the status quo in the field of psychology in a major way. Freud emphasized the importance of the unconscious mind where others thought more about the conscious mind. Thus, considering these milestones, cognitive psychology has been a major push in the world of psychology since its official beginnings in one's lab. It continues to emerge as a discipline. It can be said that cognitive psychology is in a position to explain what behavior psychology can't. Behavior psychology can't explain memory or language as those processes within the mind are not observable. John Watson wrote, Psychology as the behaviorist views it as a purely objective experimental branch of natural science. Its theoretical goal is the prediction and control of behavior. Introspection forms no essential part of its methods, nor is the scientific value of its data dependent upon the readiness with which they lend themselves to interpretation in terms of consciousness. There were four major principles of behaviorism. He believed introspective study was flawed and could not be measured objectively, and therefore observable behavior should be the focus of psychologists. Consciousness was too abstract for Watson, and believed should answer behavioral questions and not thought. Because in the early 1900s the theories were becoming more and more convoluted, Watson pushed the premise that a theory should be simple, which most everyone agreed. Lastly, conditioned reflex should be the goal of psychologists and not consciousness. Because it was not empirical. One couldn't conduct studies to confirm or disconfirm cognitive theories. For that reason, they also believed the cognitive program failed the solvable problems criterion. One couldn't use scientific method to explain thought, they argued, any more than one could use scientific method to explain morality. Cognitive psychologists solved this problem by articulating not only their theories of mental process, but also how the mental processes that are unobservable interact with the observable world. Thus, they didn't create theories of behavior but they specified the behavior that could be expected if their cognitive theory was right. 
applying the scientific method to the field of cognitive psychology may still be debatable. But what is not debatable is that the psychology is a quest to understand the human condition. After years of successful treatment with clients in the national professional sports arena, people in professional sports have found that cognitive behavioral therapy is extremely effective and has given them a distinct motivational edge in the following areas. Concentration on set goals, motivation to win, self-control and self-discipline, self-esteem and self-belief, self-understanding and self-awareness, time management, work-life balance, stamina in training, Ability to recuperate after training, mindset, and mental attitude. The age of anxiety. Many people seek professional help for a broad spectrum of occupational, family, or emotional problems. Depression and anxiety are the most common of the psychological problems, with around 60 to 70% of adults experiencing symptoms of depression, and as many as 27% of people experiencing an anxiety state at some time during their life. Cognitive behavioral therapy is an educational approach based on scientific principles which helps the client to understand their problems and how these affect their thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. The focus of the therapy is to enable clients to generate solutions to problems based on the techniques learned in therapy which are more effective than their present coping strategies. Cognitive behavioral therapy has been shown to be at least as effective as antidepressant medication, but superior to medication in the prevention of relapse and recurrence of illnesses. This is how cognitive behavioral therapy is used in sports psychology. In the first session, clients are given a cognitive behavioral therapeutic psychological assessment. These include tests which measure the clinical symptoms of stress like anxiety and depression, type A and B personality questionnaire, Myers-Briggs Occupational Test, Self-Esteem Questionnaire, Attitude Scale, and a Core Belief Test. In conjunction with diagnostic tests, a semi-structured interview is administered to target the specific areas clients want to develop using cognitive behavioral therapy for psychoeducational training. This provides a blueprint with clear-cut aims and objectives for cognitive behavioral therapy and a treatment protocol where clients know exactly what they hope to achieve and what steps they need to follow to obtain maximum results in the shortest possible time frame. The increased self-understanding using cognitive behavioral therapy in sports psychology begins by understanding the relationship between how you think, how you feel, and how this affects what you actually do. Negative thoughts about oneself, the world in general, or the future can cause a division between the actual sport performance and the way you observe and analyze your game. Cognitive behavioral therapy is used to increase the unity of the observing and participating self by challenging negative self-talk and providing more balanced reality test alternatives. Techniques to improve mindfulness, which originated in Buddhism and developed into use in a sports setting, teaches clients to let thoughts be and disassociate themselves from sensory input, which is a distraction from their single focus of the goal in hand. Visualization and imagery techniques are used to rehearse the desired aim. Statistically, it is shown that those people who visualize the end they hope to achieve are twice as likely to exceed as those who are non-visualizers.
So, you can see that psychology has many facets and has a bright future if it is applied appropriately. I believe that no one theory is better than the other, nor can one theory be used without another. This is being proven in sports therapy where cognition and behavior are being combined to help athletes excel. I hope you enjoyed this video and good luck to all those graduating this year.